Hey, I'm Emma Shorty from the School of Scratch.com, and in this video, I'll teach you how to set up Algorithm DJ2 software with the optimal settings for scratching with the Reloop BeatPad 2 controller. Open the DJ2 software and make sure that the Reloop BeatPad 2 is turned on and connected. Tap the waveform button to bring up the turntable view. Tap the settings cog and then tap general. Set play immediately to off, which allows us to manually control when we start playing samples and tracks. To load up our scratch samples, press and hold this button on whichever side you'll be using your hand on the jog wheel and tap scratch tools. This will load DJ Qbert's Scratch Tools track, which contains the scratch samples we will be using in these tutorials. I scratch with my left hand on the jog wheel, so I've loaded the scratch tools to the left turntable. If you want to use your right hand on the jog wheel, load them to the right turntable. To further customise the software display so that it looks and performs similar to a real vinyl scratch setup, open up the general settings. Turn Show Artwork on Label to On, then turn Show Tape Marker on. If I exit the settings, you can see that a tape marker has appeared, which is really useful to keep track of where the sounds occur on the record. Finally, if we go back into the general settings once more, turn Tempo Slider Invert to On, so that it matches the configuration of the Reloop BeatPad 2 tempo sliders, away from you to decrease the tempo and towards you to increase. Another important setting to configure is the crossfader curve, which adjusts how quickly the sound cuts in when we open the crossfader. For scratching, we want it set so that the sound cuts in as soon as we open the crossfader. To do this, tap the Reloop button at the bottom of the screen. Set the crossfader curve to cut. If I do a simple baby scratch and open the fader, you can see that the crossfader doesn't have to move very far before the sound cuts in. If you scratch with your crossfader reversed or hamster style like me, make sure that Invert Crossfader is set to On. Now that we have the software set up for scratching, it's time to experiment with queuing up some samples to scratch with. The tape marker position on the record corresponds with the red jog wheel light on the outside edge. If I move the jog wheel forwards, you can see that the tape marker and red jog wheel light positions are synchronised. With the tape marker at 12 o'clock, you can see that the red light matches. Then again at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And if I spin the jog wheel forwards and backwards, the positions always match. The red light gives you a general idea of the overall track position just by looking at the jog wheel and the tape marker is more accurate and precise, which is what I tend to look at when scratching with this particular setup. Let's find the R sample, which we will be using in many of the tutorials that follow. Open the crossfader. Place your hand on the jog wheel using your middle two fingers and move the jog wheel forward. The first sample is a beep. And if you imagine the record as a clock face, this sample starts at 12 o'clock and ends just before 2 o'clock. The second sample is fresh, which starts at 2 o'clock and ends just before 6 o'clock. The third sample is R, which starts a fraction before 6 o'clock and ends just before 12 o'clock. Ah. 
To queue up a sample ready to scratch with, find the starting position of the sound you want to use and note the position of the tape marker. So in this example, for the R sample, that is around six o'clock. You can also use cue points to mark where your favorite samples are located. And for now, we will keep it simple by using the tape marker as a visual guide. You may have noticed that I have the low EQ dial turned all the way down to the minimum setting, which turns off the bass frequencies of the scratch samples we are using. With a vinyl scratch setup, lowering the bass is necessary to minimize the sound of your hand tapping on the vinyl, being picked up through the needle as a low rumbling bass sound. Although this is not something that happens when scratching with a controller, lowering the bass allows the scratch samples to sound good over a beat in terms of the overall mix. That is why I recommend lowering the bass of the scratch samples. Let me show you how the R sample sounds with and without the bass. Now that the software and the controller is optimised for scratching and we have had a play with finding some samples, we are ready to learn some scratch techniques. In the next tutorial we will get hands on and start scratching. If you'd like to dive in deeper with learning how to scratch, visit schoolofscratch.com and sign up for my complete How to Scratch course.